Hey, this is Adam with Invictus Tactical Review, working with Soda Airsoft here. We're gonna take a look at some extra land navigation skills. We've got a map, got some pieces that we're gonna take a look at. So like we mentioned in a previous video, we've got declination. That's marked on the top right in a blank spot on this map. On a lot of the larger maps, they're gonna be on the bottom. So right here we've got, as written out, grid north, which aligns with all the vertical lines on our map. This particular map, also marks true north, which is two degrees off of grid north. Now the only real reason we need to know that is there is no real reason. Essentially it's academic. So we're gonna wipe that because it's a little bit of excess information that we don't really need at the moment. What we care about is magnetic north. In this particular case, that's actually 13 degrees off of grid north. So with a declination of 13 degrees, if I'm on the map and I measure an azimuth of 80 degrees, I'm actually gonna to need to subtract 13 from that unless I have a manual adjustment on my compass. So one of the things we're looking at here, we've got a map, we've got grid lines, some different terrain markings. We also have here a pocket compass, also called a protractor. This is a really compact one. A lot of the larger ones you'll see are a big square, marks all around the edges with a large triangle notched into them. This is a fairly common design that you'll see. I have this one just because it's a lot smaller, actually fits into my pocket. One of the things you're gonna to wanna to make sure you check on your map, the scale. This is a one to 25,000. Your protractor, no matter what size it is, is gonna be marked with the scale. Make sure you're using the right one. If you pull up a one to 50,000 scale, you're gonna be off by quite a bit. If you pull up a one to 24,000 scale, then you're gonna be off by just a little bit, but sometimes that's important. So when we have our map, we've got our protractor here. We found the right scale. We're gonna take a look at how to read into the grid. Uh, I'm gonna draw some of this on the board a little bigger so you can see it. We might zoom in on a couple of spots here as well. When we have a box in the grid, These are gonna be marked with meter or kilometer numbers. Uh, they all reference something in the real world, but a lot of times it's just easier to remember how they work. In this particular map, we've got markings in about the seven series near the bottom. And then along the edge, we've got markings in about the 60 series. So when we go to read a map, we get an eight digit grid something like 75296709. This is gonna tell us where we're lining it up horizontally. This is gonna tell us where we're lining it up vertically. So when you take your protractor, you're always gonna start measuring in the bottom left corner. So the first two digits of our first set of four are gonna tell us where we start here on the 75 line. We're going this way. The first two of the second set tell us where we are vertically. Going this way. That gives us this point for 75 and 67. And then we're gonna use our protractor to measure in. Now these are your first tenth and your hundredth. Your first tenth and your hundredth. So even without a protractor to scale, I can get pretty close. I know I'm coming in two tenths and then nine hundredths. It's gonna be about right here. I'm going up zero tenths and nine hundredths. We're gonna be something about there in that square. Even without a protractor knowing how these work, I can get close. So you do wanna make sure when you start with your protractor, when you're technically measuring, we'll lay the map up here. If I come up with 75, 67. I'm going to find that intersection. I'm going to start at that intersection with the corner of my protractor. Measure in and count up. What you want to avoid is lining up the corner of your protractor, the wrong corner here, and then counting over, inadvertently jumping into the next box. So when we start here, we've got 75. We've got six, seven. We're gonna start at this corner, 
bottom of the protractor aligned on our line and we're going to count in along the horizontal line, count up along the vertical line, mark your point, you pull your protractor away, you'll have your point marked in the box. That's just a basic look at how to use a protractor on a map, how to line it up. We'll probably throw some additional examples up here and we'll take a look at how to read some of the terrain lines as well in just a moment. All right, so we're gonna take a look at some of the different terrain features and some of the different contour lines that we're gonna see on here. Uh, so as you heard me mention, contour lines on the map. All right, so you'll see some of the lines on here. We've got some bigger, darker lines, and we've got a bunch of littler lines, and then another big, dark line. And these are contour lines, and the curves and the distance are gonna tell us what the terrain is doing. It does take some practice to read these, so I'm just gonna copy a couple over so we can kind of get a look at what they look like. If we see big, straight-ish lines with some decent spacing, then we've got a bold one here, and a bold one there, and a different pen here, a different pen there, and neither pen really works well, then what this is gonna tell us is that this is fairly shallow slope and it's an even straight hillside. The contour lines are gonna follow an exact elevation, so they'll cut in and out, and then the fact that they're far apart means it's kind of shallow. If we see something that's a little more interesting, like lines coming in and going this way, lines coming in and then cutting, this is a gully or a ravine. Uh, this is gonna tell us that you know there's a hill here, there's a hill here, and this is the, the deeper, narrow spot in between the two hills as they come up to the top. And this hill might even uh, curve around and go that way. We could get some flatter lines out here. That type of terrain can happen. If you're looking at a kind of a prominent point that sticks out from up above, we might see it curve like this. This could be a ridge that sticks out here. Um, the interesting thing about terrain lines is that we could flip this over. This could also be a real shallow kind of draw or valley. What you're going to need to pay attention to here is context. Is there a hilltop right here and it'll be marked? Or is there a stream going down this way that goes to a river? If there's a river down here, I guarantee you this is the lower end of the map. So sometimes you're going to have to take a look at context for some of the things there. If you get a spot that looks really curved and the lines are close together, pretty tight, this is gonna tell you it's rough terrain, it's not a smooth cliff face, but the fact that they're tight means that this is a steep area. So if you're plotting something and you've got a nice wide section up here and then all of these lines suddenly run together and become really steep, this is the flat area, it starts to get steep, that's the cliff above the flat area. So, walk around. So I realize this has been extremely basic, but hopefully if you've done just a little bit of land navigation before, or if you've sat in on a couple of classes, but you didn't really remember it all, this has been a decent refresher. If it's been a long time, hopefully it gets you clued back into what you're doing there. If you have other questions, if I've made mistakes and you must call me out and correct me, stick them in the comments, catch me on Facebook or Twitter, I'll absolutely respond to those. And if you'd like to learn more, if you think something else would fit in a video, just let me know and I'd have to put that out for you. Uh, again, this is Adam with Invictus Tactical Review. Stay safe. See you later.